Our next application of projective pre-varieties and their morphisms is an embedding that we will use to eventually prove that projective pre-varieties are in fact varieties. And this application is the Segre embedding. So it is a way to embed the product of two projective spaces into some higher dimensional projective space. For affine space, this was much easier because simply the affine m plus n space is exactly the product of affine m space times affine n space. But for projective space, because of the quotient construction of projective space, this will not work immediately, so we need to do something else, and that something is the Segre embedding. So what we do is we take capital N to be one smaller than the product of m plus one times n plus one. So P capital N is the set of lines in m plus one times n plus one space, and therefore we may give it coordinates z0 0 to zmn with all possible combinations in between. Pause and think that the numbers are correct. The embedding itself will go as follows. So to a pair x in pm and y in pm, we will assign the point of coordinates, the products of the x coordinates times the y coordinates in all possible ways. And the claim is that this map is an isomorphism between PM times PN and the zero set inside P capital N of this um, of, of these polynomials for all combinations of I, J, K, and L that are possible. So this is the zero set of all such polynomials where i and k run from 0 to m, and j and l run from 0 to n. So how do we prove this? Well, first, uh, the, the well-definedness and algebraicity of this map are somehow clear, so we'll just prove that the image is exactly this zero set. So we want to prove that first, that f of pn times pn sits inside the this set, which for brevity I will call z. So it sits inside z. So that's the first thing. And this is clear simply by definition of how the map is done. The more crucial part is the other um, implication. And so how do we prove this? Well, we'll take a point that's denoted z i j over all possibilities i j in this set z. So then, since we're in projective space, not all coordinates z, i, j can be uh, simultaneously zero. And so therefore, there exists at least one uh, that is non-zero. We may assume that it is the zero, zero coordinate. Otherwise, the argument is exactly analogous. And since it's not zero and we're in projective space, we can just to do this with easy numbers, assume that it is equal to 1. And in that case, by the defining equations of z, we get that z i j times z 0 0, which is 1, is equal to z i 0 times z 0 j. And so if we call this xi and this yj, then this means exactly that zij is equal to f of xi 
yj. So then this shows in particular that this point lies in the image. And notice that the requirement that z0,0 is not 0 means that neither x0 nor y0 will be 0, and so therefore this is actually a point in the pair of projective spaces here. So this uh, belongs to the image of f. And the fact that this is a morphism can be checked coordinate-wise because everything is polynomial. So this map F is called the Segre embedding of PM times PN into P capital N. And the coordinates ZIJ are called the Segre coordinates on PM times PN. This uh, map is named in honor of the Italian algebraic geometer Segre. And uh, when we look at the Segre coordinates, what we're really doing is we're actually viewing PM times PN as sitting inside P capital N uh, already and use these coordinates to describe uh, that variety. One special example of this is if we take the embedding of P1 times P1, then if you do the math, the Segre embedding goes into P3. So really what you have is some sort of uh, lines here. And so what this map explicitly does is that it takes a point x0, x1, y0, y1, to the point x0, y0, x0, y1, x1, y0, x1, y1. And somehow what's happening is that if you take, if you fix the first, if you fix this, so these are fixed. Then what you get is the other line embedded into three-dimensional projective space, somewhat hyperbolically. So the image you get, viewed as, say, real points, looks like this as a hyperbola. And you know, a hyperbola is made of straight lines, and the geometric picture behind this is roughly that. But this works in general for any PM, PN, and it will help us prove that projective varieties are varieties. So remember, we have already seen that projective, uh, rather projective pre-varieties are pre-varieties. So what we need to show is that they are separated. So we need to look at the diagonal embedding of Pn into Pn times Pn. So you want to show that the diagonal inside P n times P n is closed. And this will show the result for projective space. And then the result will follow from the general theory on varieties for projective uh, pre-varieties. So we need to show that projective space is separated. And so what is this thing? Well, this is the set of all x comma x with x in Pn. And so one way to describe it, if we write x as uh, the point x0 to xn, is that this is the set of pairs of points x0 to xn, y0 to yn, that are the same as points in projective space or as lines in affine space. And this line criterion we can describe using linear algebra as the rank of the matrix 
with two lines, first line x0 to xn, second line y0 to yn, the rank being 1. The rank can't be 0 because we are excluding the origin, and so if we want these to define the same line, the rank has to be 1. And this is exactly the set of all such points where these two times two determinants, x i y j minus y i x j is equal to zero for all i j. Um, but writing this in Segre coordinates, we recognize this exactly as the vanishing set of z i j minus z j i for all possible i j. This is in Segre chords. And so this is closed in the image of Pn times Pn under the Segre embedding. And because the image is isomorphic to Pn times Pn, we know that this is closed. This proves that Pn is separated, therefore a variety, and therefore any projective pre-variety, so any closed subset of this, will also be separate.